Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Celebration Grounds and I am with Mr. Jeffrey Howard this morning and we're going to talk about the industry and where we stand. I know we're up in, in uh, over 2,500 entries for the Celebration. Uh, anything else you can tell us? You know, I think uh, from the perspective of the show, we're excited. I mean, the horses are up, uh, entries are over 2,500 again, I think. Um, for the first time last year, we went over 2,500 for the first time since 2012. I think that's right, Jerry. So right. to hit that number again um, it is it was a positive for us because we were a little concerned. Uh, if you look at the shows this year, there's been an, some of the shows that have been just slightly down from where they were the previous year. So for us to be able to get back to where we were the year before and, and hit over that 2,500 mark, uh, we're really excited about that. That's significant. It is. Yeah, it, really it, is. It, it really is. They, uh, I know that we went to shows this weekend, Fedville, and then War Trace. I was really enthused with the number. Like Friday night, we had a good show, but Saturday night, the War Trace show was, I mean, it was, it was a lot of good two year olds. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of good horses there. Yeah, I think uh, I totally agree. I mean, War Trace is a historic show in this business. War Trace is historic uh, in our business, uh, the cradle of the Tennessee walking horse, right? So to have to see them have 161 uh, horses, a very good crowd, uh, I yes. thought, uh, and so people to be able to enjoy uh, what ended up being good weather. I know there was the threat of storms all night, but they never got there at least until the show was over. Uh, but yes, I think the quality, the depth, both nights, uh, just very, very uh, uh, impressive and I think a good sign uh, for things to come. I know the War Trace show has uh, had some years where they haven't been as strong, uh, right. getting there up close to the celebration, right? People are ready and turn their attention once the deadline is over uh, for celebration to kind of turn their attention to that. But to see that and to see, you're right, not just 161 horses, but quality horses, horses that will have a chance to win at the celebration were over at War Trace the other night and, and at Fayetteville. Uh, I thought they had a fantastic show. Oh, I, I was I was tickled with the Fedful show. They they just made it out. I mean, it was just above average. But they sold out a chicken as usual. Yeah. And but War Trace, I've seen a friend I hadn't seen in a while, and they said, you know how many years it's been since we've seen this many people at this show? Yeah. And they're right because I mean people were fighting for spaces to just where they could sit and see. So Correct. It was, it was Correct. Good. It was good. Makes make you look forward to celebration. It it, it right. very much does. Right. So, well, now we we're meeting here to give an update on the industry. I know that there's a lot of talk about scar rule, uh, lawsuits, uh, injunctions, the whole nine yards. So. Just to set the industry straight, I'm going to let you tell us where we're at. Okay, I, I can I can attempt to do that, right? So uh, there are no uh, lawsuits uh, uh, currently, uh, or or uh, anything impending uh, right now. So uh, definitely, I think it's something that the industry is always willing to defend our show horse and what we feel are the rights of our trainers, exhibitors, owners, and all of that. So in no way, shape, or form would we ever not defend that. But currently, our working relationship with uh, HIOs and the USDA is not probably as contentious or uh, in, in the level of disagreement that a lot of people may think that it is. So there are definitely areas, you are aware of these, um, after the National Academies of Science study um, and its language with regards to the SCAR rule, the industry does feel like, we do feel like, there needs to be clarity in that. And, and I think they stated there needs to be clarity in that, and we agree with that, and we're waiting to see what that clarity uh, may or may not be. Um, Post-show inflammation. No different than the previous couple of years, the industry does not feel like that is a Horse Protection Act uh, violation. Um, the horse has passed inspection pre-show uh, and has been doing nothing but being in the ring. Um, and a ring injury is not, um, if, if there is something that happens in the ring, that is not an HPA violation right, right there. So uh, those are areas where we do have some concerns. Those are areas that uh, we have communicated with the USDA with regards to those concerns. Um, and in some respects, they have different viewpoints on those than we do. 
but again, that is something that we work um, hand in hand with them on uh, from our HOs, all of the HOs, not just the show HO, uh, but work with the USDA to try to make sure that we are both enforcing the Horse Protection Act as it should be. So um, with regards to swabbing, that has been a very oh, yes. popular topic uh, over the last month. Just to make sure that everybody understands what the facts are there um, instead of what is uh, the rumor mill. Um, and on the initial rollout of that, the HOs got an email uh, on, on the Thursday before the Lewisburg Horse Show on Friday. It was in place on that Friday night. As we are all aware, the weather was not great that night. In fact, it was terrible. <clears throat> the showgrounds were a mess. Uh, um, and so it, it, was, it was hard to get a handle on exactly what was going on there. They were swabbing a lot of horses. They were using an alcohol pad to do so. Uh, they were running them in their machine. Um, I do believe they had issues with their machine in terms of the turnaround time. So horses were already in the ring before the results were coming back. Um, and so there were, everyone left that night with a lot of confusion. Um, and then we went into Saturday night at Pulaski and there were two horses that were disqualified from competition due to results from uh, their new technology. Um, and so I think one thing that everybody has to understand is, is the industry has asked for and welcomes new technology, scientific, objective, science-based, those types of tests that can give you a yes or a no. We have asked for it, we will welcome it. However, there does have to be transparency in its use uh, involving the industry so that the industry knows what it is uh, that these machines do and, and how we can be assured of the accuracy of the results. And so through communication uh, with the USDA, and there was a lot of concern at the anything at any level uh, statement that came out from the USDA that anything at any level that wasn't in the show provided lubricant would be a violation. Clearly, the industry had concerns with that. Uh, the show HIO had concerns with that. I think probably the other HIOs had concerns with that. And so, in discussions, the USDA on the Thursday after Pulaski, uh, they did clarify what would be a disqualifying substance uh, on a horse. And so I want to read that exactly so that people um, understand exactly what the USDA shared with us. So it says, for the remainder of the 2023 season, the USDA will continue to test for all possible substances for data collection and validation. However, we will only refer horses for disqualification that have a prohibited substance with no legitimate use during an HPA event. This includes, but is not limited to, numbing agents, lidocaine, benzocaine, et cetera, caustic substances, and counter irritants. So um, I think two things um, is, is, is the environment with which our horses are shown in, the, the no threshold uh, really was a concern for, for any substance. And then also therapeutic uh, exceptions and therapeutic substances and things that are prescribed for our horses, uh, they do care for their feet. They do take that very, very serious with how the scar rule is called uh, in the industry. It is very important that our horses are cared for properly. Um, and, and they are athletes. They are worked. They do wear uh, an approved six ounce action device that does cause some friction, right? So it is totally acceptable that they are cared for. And no one knew in the caring for the horses would that substance show up and be anything at any level. And so I think the USDA and, and we're appreciative for, for them coming and saying, hey, look, we're going to do uh, additional testing on this. We will involve the industry. I think that is something that they also said. We intend to partner with the HIOs as well as other equine groups during this all season to continue to refine our testing program for the 2024 season and beyond. That is also something that we had asked uh, repeatedly for is include us in the data collection, include us in the, uh, the testing of this so that we know and we are partnering with uh, the USDA. I think that is how it's intended to go is that HIOs would partner with them. But also it goes beyond just the HIOs, uh, the industry, the trainers, the, the, the owners to understand better what is this and, and how can it be properly enforced and utilized. I think all of us agree that if there is technology out there that can identify a caustic agent on a horse or a numbing agent on a horse, we are all for the disqualification of that as well as a penalty for whoever violates that right there. 
but not knowing a lack of transparency, not understanding. Those are things that I think that is where the industry pushback was going to be uh, centered around. It wasn't that the technology was here um, because, again, we want to welcome a more objective way to test our horses instead of the subjective ways that we talked about earlier with scar rule and NAS studies and people saying it needs refining and all of that, right? That's harder to get to some objective standard. This technology here, and it should be technology that the industry would also utilize, right, when the USDA isn't present. I think it would be really important for our HIOs to be able to do the same thing. We've always said this, right? Our industry enforcement will be most effective when there's no difference between it and the USDA's enforcement, right? So that when you come to a show, you know the standard. It doesn't matter who's there. It doesn't matter if it's this HIO, that HIO, or the USDA, that you're going to get that right there. So I hope that helps to clarify um, um, what is going on. I, I will say this too, Jerry, the leadership uh, in the industry from the breeders, the trainers, the celebration, um, the HIOs, um, uh, the FAST uh, board ha have all been on calls and these emails to understand exactly the facts of this. So it is not um, secretive shows like yours are great so that the people that may not serve on those boards or are not a part of those phone calls can get the exact same information because i know they're showing horses i get a lot of calls hey we're going to the show what is this what's going on how do i you know and, and so hopefully this can help to um, um, get more information i will say this I, we were fully expecting um, and hoping i guess uh, for this technology to be at the shows this past weekend to see if the change to anything at any level w was reflective in the irritants, counter irritants, caustics, you know, that, that type of thing. So, so we, didn't, we didn't see it this past weekend. So uh, I do think there is some still angst out there as to what is and what is not. Um, but, but hopefully um, we can work through that this year, get to the off season and, and participate in the training there. Well, has any, any question be, being asked to them about how the swabs are being taken. I mean, talk the, I'm talking about the conditions of where they're at. And I know we when we did the tomography, it could be 40 degrees outside, and we was using the tomography. Yeah. And uh, but the conditions around where they're using, because like at the rock pile, there are a lot of uh, oils, gases diesel everything because they sell equipment over there, mm -hmm. all kinds of greases and things so they have a lot of equipment coming in that is going to i mean it's going to be on soil it's going to be on where the horses walk uh has any of that been addressed it has been i think in the initial conversations after the lewisburg and pulaski weekend we brought up the environment and the conditions in the environment environment and i definitely think um in the discussions that we had when you talk about the all season uh, right. testing and, and a greater sense of transparency with the industry that would be is can we get a comfort that trace amounts of things that are in the environment would not be coming back as that so we have not gotten that exact answer Jerry other than to say they altered the program for what would disqualify a horse and they said that we would go into the off season and refine it so I do think in the refinement uh, from those discussions you're talking about things like how is it collected mm -hmm. right. you know so they did share what the machines are okay initially they didn't but now they do so we can go look at what are the standard they did address the humidity um, and that their chemist said that even at higher than 80 percent I think that's optimal as humidity levels under but even at over that it would not skew the results of the test so again I think just a better uh, open channel of communication with them would help to answer a lot of these right. questions and, and I think that is, is, is I hate to use the word pushback but but our uh, communication to USDA was hey pe people need to know more about this to have a greater level of confidence because right. it is in an open environment you do walk by generators you do have mud you do have all of these things and I, I think I, I will say I think the USDA has accounted for that now they got to share with us how right but i do think they have accounted for that i don't think trace uh elements are, are what 
is coming back. But again, sharing of information with the custodian of the horse. They are going to do that. What it was, what level it is at. So those types of things um, are where we need to get to. And I think we will, uh, but it was, it was a little bit of a rough rollout. <laughs> well, it's a step in the right direction. And that, that's, I know that's what concerns people because I made a statement about that I had been told and I hoped it wasn't right that about the uh, filing a, a lawsuit for Scarlow, filing an injunction against the swabbing. And I, I was hoping it wasn't right, but it, it, we're not, but not right now. We're just in a st kind of yeah. a standstill situation. Yeah, so, I, 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 I'll say this. To say that we are or say that we're not mm -hmm. would not be accurate right now. I think we are continuing to look at how do we make sure that we are fairly treated, treated uh, and, and, that, and that doesn't mean that we are looking for a fair advantage right. okay and i think that, that's the fear out there is are, are we trying to get around something we are not trying to get around anything but we have to be certain that what is found is for that purpose and those people should be disqualified that is where we just have to close that gap or fill in that gap however you want to say that to make sure that we are all on the same page um, because what the USDA wants and what the industry wants with this testing, it is the same thing. Right. Is it at the same right now? No. No. But, but here is, again, we intend to partner with the HIOs. They consider that the industry. We do as well, right? As well as other equine groups. I think that is also important for us is, is what are other equine groups doing, right? I mean, that is something that we want to pattern ourselves after if they are doing it in other areas if these other equine groups have experience in it tell us what that is and, and let us tailor it to our horse and in our situation again not no other breed is every horse before every class you know i mean so there are limitations to us uh, right. that that others don't have they can employ technology because they do it at random or they do it uh, not at even every show or whatever like that whereas in our case you know, it's every horse <laughs> before every class at every show and then post-show. Uh, and so, I mean, we have a lot more inspection than anyone else. So there are going to be things that are harder for us to do. Yeah, I've had other breeds tell me that they couldn't pass it. But <laughs> you know what I really believe would be if they would select, and, and Dr. Reimer could do this, he could s select two or three of his VMOs and send them to a barn and tell them, say, watch them try watch them when they they actually shoe a horse to change his gait and watch what happens when they do so much as put a one s sleeve in um, or one flat or i had a trainer say one time i want you to turn that foot a quarter inch so help me a quarter inch i'm sitting there thinking he's crazy right it made a world difference. Yeah. So these are things that I do not believe the USDA actually understands what our horse is capable of doing. Right. And they just figure if he's that good, he's been abused. <laughs> and the fact is, he's that good because he hasn't been abused. Yeah, I think, I, I think um, again, that would be sharing of information the opposite way, right? Of, of right. them being able to understand a little bit more what we do. I, I do think... Uh, Dr. Reiner and his team, they've had their training one year at a, at a barn. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do think they have come. Now, again, they have turnover with their inspectors like we do with ours. And, and, and it's clear this is something else that we have concern with. There are many of the USDA VMOs that work great with our DQPs and have consistent results with our DQPs. Again, they're trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. We do have cases where, and we can show data that shows some of them, it will exponentially rise in the violations depending upon who is sent to right. the horse show. And again, there is a concern that, that, that we have. We and, have and so, that out many times. <laughs> so, and again, I, I don't, I don't uh, that's not an accusation of anything. It's a factual right. uh, account of what is defense, going on. In their defense, I will say this. We pointed out one particular VMO and the next show, that BMO, was completely different mm -hmm. in the way they inspected. So I, I know they, they hear us. I know that. Oh, I, I, 
I, I don't ever, uh, I'm never concerned about them being willing to listen. Um, and, and I do think they take into account factual things. Just like us, they get to hear a lot of, well, you should have seen this and you should have seen that. And it isn't always exactly uh, the factual account of what happened. <laughs> but when we do have good facts, I, I, I would say this. Uh, the USDA takes our phone calls. Uh, they're willing to respond to us uh, typically in a very uh, quick fashion. So in that sense, I, I couldn't say anything uh, negative or in, in any way, shape or form that they're trying to hide or, or be unwilling to communicate. Do we always agree? No, we don't, right? Okay. But um, that's okay. Uh, I think- We don't always agree among ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, so uh, well, well stated there. Yes, you're exactly right. So, but anyway, I, 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 hope, I hope some people can get uh, comfort with the fact that if they are doing the right things, um, that this technology through the remainder of the year will be focused on trying to identify substances that um, have no reason to be there and they're at levels that they would be causing an issue with your horse. So, Well, this is a positive way to start the celebration. And if everything goes as they say, and as we do, then we should have a fantastic celebration and I'm looking forward to it. Is there any predictions? Watch it. <laughs> I, 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 um, assuming good weather, I'll bet you that the crowds are up. Uh, as I think all of us know, uh, Friday and Saturday night, uh, rain can dramatically impact the overall attendance at the celebration, mm -hmm. right? We had rain on the last Saturday last year, and that was, that was tough for our, for our uh, uh, people in the happen. seats. <laughs> that's right. So hopefully we have good weather. So I, I don't know if that's a, that's a prediction. I, I'll say this, Jerry. I think um, in terms of uh, what happens before a horse shows, um, I, I don't see there being a lot of difference between that and in previous years and now. Um, and in previous years, there are horses that are disqualified that do not feel like they should have been right. disqualified, right? And so I would unfortunately suspect that that will be the case uh, again. But also, uh, I just, I, I think it is really important is, is horses that are not compliant with the Horse Protection Act and or have canes, for instance, on them, we don't want them participating at the celebration or at any horse show. That's got nothing to do with just the celebration. But I would think, speaking for a director at the celebration here, um, we don't want them to be, to be able to compete. We want a fair competition. We want everyone to be within the same rules and guidelines, which again, it goes back to all we've talked about is transparency and understanding what the rules are and what they're not and making sure that we can effectively enforce them. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to make one prediction. All right. The last horse out is our world grand champion. Bet you money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you. I'm not going to bet you on that. I think you're right. Uh, so anyway, but no, I think um, we're, we're excited. I, I think we have a good judging panel. I think um, it, it's it's um, we're really, really looking forward to the show um, and, and can't wait to get started. I, I will say Cooper Steel Arena is is in the middle of its renovation right now. People will see some pretty fantastic uh, changes. aesthetic changes uh, in no way, shape or form. Is it anywhere close to the finished product, but some aesthetics on the outside, uh, the back wall, they'll be done in time for our morning classes that will be in there. Another change this year, Jerry, is, is uh, and I don't know, um, you're the historian better than me, but uh, the fact that there will now be the Wednesday night session of the celebration. So it is not the Futurity. The Futurity has right. rolled in again. Last year we made that change, but the Wednesday night was still in Cooper Steel Arena this year that night session so it will be your ticket for the celebration will be for 11 nights in the big oval instead of 10 nights right. in the big oval so that's something exciting there as well that we're that uh, you know people think there's a lack of growth right but uh, we're adding a night to the celebration out in the big oval so i think that's a positive hey, i remember when there wasn't any building other than that big arena mm -hmm. and all shows were held in yeah there, so yeah so I'm, I'm just stepping back in time yeah sure. yeah there you go so anyway well, I really appreciate you sharing with us because I know there was a lot of concern and I think that you have answered a lot of the questions that have been out there and uh, I'm looking forward to celebration. You got it.